morning. <coughs> Consul Spain, <coughs> dear colleagues and friends, Lee and Carlos, <coughs> all of you, thank you very much for your presence in um, this um, rainy morning day in, in Shanghai. I must uh, say something about um, and express my gratitude to the foundation, the Spanish um, foundation for contemporary architecture and express not only the gratitude for this invitation and this opportunity, as well for his effort to support and develop the art modern architecture or contemporary architecture, not only in Spain, far beyond the limit of the country, in all around the world. <coughs> um, let me say something about architecture and the process of architecture before um, show you uh, some of the work of our, our office. The architecture involved um, many complex interests, many different worlds, economic, the natural world, functional, social aspects, you know, many, many aspects, many worlds. I must say that Whatever one of those walls you selected, economical or structural, any of them, first is the shape. Without shape, it's impossible to analyze or to study one of those aspects, either to develop architecture. So, shape is first to everything. Without shape, there is not possible um, any interest regarding the structural or functional aspect. So that's it's, it's a strong request for architects. We have to propose first a shape and then develop and study the shape. Sometime in the process, we deleted this shape, this initial pre-shape, and start with another one. It's true that mm, we don't like it to express in this way. We would like uh, the architect to express the reality of shape, of form, as a result of a process. So, the most important in the, our work is this determination of form. Can not surprise us that this is our first preoccupation. And it can not surprise us either that in all the schools of architecture in the world, and today, this morning, we are in one of the most important in the world, the student requests an answer to the most insistence of the question. How do we make architecture? All the study in the world asks the all architect, all, all, all the architect in practice, what is the limit of the personal decision? What is the limit of the freedom selecting the shape? It's true that the shape is the result of a process or it's not true and the architect, uh, when they finish their studies and practice architecture, make decision with more freedom. What is the limit for freedom? How arbitrary, might I say, to produce good architecture. 
all those who preceded us responded by means of a certain process and now some confirm that it's the process itself that make architecture. It is evident that there are many way, many ways to look. If we take a three-dimensional look at the planet, we could state that Shanghai and Madrid or China and Spain are back against back in two walls that do not face each other. But if we map the wall and carry out a very architectural process of drawing on a, on a plane, the, the three-dimensional wall, we realize that Shanghai and in Spain are the two extreme indeed, but of a new wall. Different and away from each other, but precisely in the extreme of the same wall. Different but equal. So, I ask my, myself, can the for this relation have an interest? It is worth the trouble to see from Shanghai the architecture of this small and distant country called Spain. And another question, is there an architecture that we could consider Spanish? Well, I sincerely believe not. There is not a Spanish architecture. In, in the same way that we can establish the existence of an Italian, Danish, or Chinese architecture. There is not a national style. But do the Spanish architects, not only me, all the Spanish architects, carry out their project in a way that they or we could consider an Spanish way? I sincerely believe so. Unlike other schools and universities abroad, the Spanish architect received by law an education as an architect and a civil engineer as well. It could seem paradoxical that this apparently restrain that to be an engineer could restrict our freedom in this process of creation of form, but it's just the opposite. Why the opposite? If we consider that the architectural idea is the intellectual support of the shape, to have a sh we can select any shape, but to support this shape, we need an intellectual idea of the shape. But uh, architectural ideas are not architectural. It needs to be developed, it needs to be erected, it needs to be constructed. And in the process of construction, in many occasions, the original idea, the original shape, this ideal form is transformed by the process, is transformed by the process of construction. To transform doesn't mean to alter or destroy the idea. It's not a process of depreciate the original idea. And to be a civil engineer at the same time of an architect, give us the vision of how the idea must be constructed how it will be evolved, transformed by this vision of the intellectual vision of the idea and intellectual vision of the process of construction. When a Spanish architect doesn't work in this way, if his or her architecture loses much more interest. Uh, 
it's true that the, when we are speaking of an architecture, of an, an architect that have a whole vision of the whole process, the architects has been a long the time be really worried about to eliminate the arbitrary decision in the process. Not long ago, the functionalist, as you know, go to the point of trying to make us believe that the shape was the absence of shape. The shape was no shape replace it by program, and now there are some architects that say that it's the process who make the, the shape. It's the computer by itself, or pre-established parametric system. It's not me, it's the process. It's not me, it's the program. It's not me, it's the computer. I'm not responsible for that. Let me say that the, it's time to remember a little bit. The time in which space and shape were considered the same thing. Let me remember, remember you three European examples. The Pantheon in Rome, the most important of the classic building that is still uh, be possible to visit, to admire. In this building, in this incredible section, all of us know that shape, space, and structure are the same thing. The second it's also Roman, as is in Istanbul, Hagia Sophia. It's a scheme evolved by the concept, shape, space, and form, a structure, <coughs> is the same. <coughs> it's the same thing. The th third is in Cordoba, the city of our foundation the base of our foundation. But it's Islamic. There are two structure and shape as a same consequence. In a way it's the same, the structure and the space. But this space is different. For the first time, this space is independent of the structure. It's a mathematic space that could be extended with no limit. It's an endless space. And the, for the first time in history, the structure is independent of this space. When century later, the space became independent of the structure, the architectural shape turned out to be so free I mean, a century ago, that the architect needed to find a process, a new process, because we lose it, the relation between form and structure. After so many years of the structural one, one release it, the architect look it for a new partner. After the divorce, a new marriage. A bond which will avoid the freedom of what is arbitrary. We become freedom. We get the freedom to separate structure from, from shame and space. But apparently for the architect, for us, this freedom is excessive. That is to say, the process of the idea. Certainly, sometimes this process 
turn out to be as arbitrary as chance itself. And perhaps for that reason, of, or because of the mentioning, mentioning structural education, the Spanish methods turn out to be a little bit different. I would like to show you three examples of three late Spanish masters who are very much forgotten. And those old master, forgotten master, I think we will express this um, relation between the Spanish method of create a shape and a space at the same time at the structure. The first, I think, is this, this man, is Eduardo Torroja. Um, at um, civil engineer by education, but an architect of, of um, thoughts. And this man, long before others, and previously the World War, so that means uh, in the 30s, the uh, past century, he created spaces like those one. It's a relation between function and shape. You see on it's the fronton de recoletos, a um, uh, space to play um, r with racket ball. Um, it's to, to laminated um, domes. The biggest one is for the space of uh, sport and the smallest one for the spectators. And an, an amazing relation between the space, function, shape, and the structure. The Roch established that the functionalism doesn't imply the absence of shape. So the functionalism is not boxes, simple schematic shapes it is possible to create form, not arbitrary form, ar arbitrary form, and instead of that, form related with the function and the space, and recover the old uh, tradition of Rome with a new vision. This new view, this new proposal, um, Carried out by his student, his pupil Felix Candela, another Spanish master, who take the uh, palaboloided, those shape, those form, those structural, that the structural create the space, um, and he uh, translated his um, Candela. Uh, after the Spanish Civil War uh, emigrated to Mexico and he started to develop those forms um, that he was um, obviously a master. Previously, uh, the work of Oscar Niemeyer of Eros Arinen, another two master of um, shape and cube <coughs> space in uh, America, South American uh, Niemeyer, and North American Sarinim, following the example of this architect and engineer. And the third one is <coughs> Fernando Gueras, younger, that develop um, and keep on this track, on this process of create form without the arbitrary process of the shape, connecting again a structure and shape for the creation of the space with dome, a marvelous dome, erected in this process, I try to explain of how to construct the idea with brick, demonstrating that with cheap material it's possible to create, uh, not only with concrete, those huge dome and huge spaces. Um, so I prepared this, this um, scheme, this diagram, to 
relate this uh, short introduction about my vision of um, the process of uh, architecture um, from the intellectual idea to the um, determination of shape and later on the construction. Um, and those different wall I mentioned it at the beginning, we selected eight, but obviously could be more. There are not only those eight. For example, the one, gravity, the oldest of the forces that, that determinate the shape of the building, the shape of the space. Second, geometry, another force. All those eight are, are forces, not visible forces, that affect a schematic elemental form. If the form is in the center of this um, uh, octagonal, all those forces affect the shape. Sometimes if you put your accent on gravity, number one, uh, is one of the example um, we just look at, the um, domes of Candela or Torroja. Obviously, it's not only one of those forces that determinated the process of, of the shape, of the form, of the architectural form. In, 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 in some in occasion, there are all of those eight, or probably more, or less, or only one. The, the third one is arbitrary, the chance, arbitrary. There are four that de determine the shape in occasion. Obviously, the climate, with gravity, one of the oldest forces that determine the shape of the buildings. Number five, the program is not the, in the most popular um, consideration, actually, but the program is um, one of the um, oldest uh, forces that, that determined the form of the buildings. From, from the old, old times. What say about the economy? Economy is not very popular in some um, architectural world, but it's too one of the forces that determine the shape of the buildings. And the number seven, the pre-existence, <coughs> the surroundings, the history, the, the, those that are there before we arrive. And number eight, for the last but not the least, topography, the, the land, the topography of the earth. I have eight examples of our work to explain those, this, um, this process, how we made this process in occasion. Um, I think no time for the eight, but I think we have time to, to have a look at, the, for example, six of those examples. First one is Tower of Hercules. Those towers are in Spain, South Spain. The Strait of Gibraltar is the, um, the strait that um, separates Europe from Africa. This is a mythological site. The Gibraltar is this um, cape and the bay of Algeciras. And at the bottom of the bay um, is this, this project. The project is a tower. How, how we must work in the process of determining the shape of a tower. It's gravity. So that's what I selected the example to, because I think the force that determines the shape of the tower, of this tower, and mostly all the sample of tower, or many examples of tower, Gravity. Gravity is the most evident force in construction. It's so evident that it's the oldest. And as we, um, or I uh, mentioned before, this force has given us 
many of the most beautiful and interesting architectural shapes. Um, it's, it's, it's not difficult to understand. The, um, first, the horizontal loads are transmitted in the vertical slab. And then the horizontal um, loads are transmitted vertically to the head. This is very simple, as in many, many buildings. But in a tower, we have a new force, wind. And wind is not gravity. It's a new force, very modern. And the wind affects the structure. And the wind is horizontal, not vertical. And this vertical, uh, when you receive the four of horizontal loads of wind, create not horizontal strips, create diagonals. But you can see in this square, and the square is the elemental form. We start with very elemental square, and it's affected by this load, and um, it created diagonal. If we keep on this um, process, we will find a develop of the elevation of the tower creating this elemental grid of uh, uh, porticos of slab and column plus the diagonal. And we create with this the shape and the form that are going to create the internal space of the tower. But even more, there are not only one force in, in, in this project, in, as usual. I have this, um, I like to, to comment with you um, that um, there are a relation, a strong relation, a, a new force in this, in this particular side, in this area of Spain. The, if you see on the bottom, on the right bottom of this shot, is the symbol of dollar. The symbol of dollar is Spanish. It represents, is the, um, the logo of this part of the wall, the column of Hercules, the strip of Gibraltar, in one of the four uh, of uh, Hercules, the mythological uh, myth, he put both, both um, feet in one part of the wall in, in, in Africa and another in Europe, and he created this, um, this symbol of the two columns uh, surrounded by a band with a legend, a legend who said, non plus ultra, non further beyond this point. The wall finishes for the Roman there, in this point. They never went beyond this, this point of the Mediter Mediterranean. So <coughs> this is strong relation is established a force of, of connection, a link it with our project of two tower with the two column. And we see just in this scheme of the process that all those uh, diagonals that had to resist the forces of the strain of the wind created um, a surprising language, a new language that uh, expressed this, the, with this diagonal, the logo of um, um, uh, non plus ultra, with the letter that create around the tower the legend non further beyond non plus ultra. In this, so the structure is the expression of the building, is the at the same time the uh, protection that provides shade uh, over the facade, and um, and it continues up up the building uh, with no interior and connection between the two tower the bridge. The second sample is related with geometry. It's uh, a headquarter of um, a Spanish company uh, in Madrid. In this um, area, the project is affected by geometry. The first geometry is the geometry of the city. 
the city is designed in this part of, the, of Madrid with a curie, as in many, many um, cities in the world. Again, an architectural, um, sorry, no? again, an architectural simple form, the square. But um, this, this, um, this grid that you can see it, had been affected, had been um, adapted by the uh, intersected grid more arbitrary of the urban routes that create that deform uh, the initial square to another different shape, more uh, rhomboid. In consequence, we adapted the building to these forces of geometry in plan. But the plan, you see the plan adapted, the plan of the building adapted to the geometry of the forces of the city. Uh, and in height, we made the same, and we respect the geometry of the surrounding. But so the plan becomes section. And the right angle shape, ide ideal on um, plan, become the section two. In a very simple process of a construction, in a very Spanish way, how are we going to construct this idea? The idea that the section, you see the section is a square and the plan is a square. In a very simple way, first land, the second two columns, third a beam that connect the two columns, and then in the four is the square. Again the square, the same square of the plan suspended in this big beam. Um, this a square, this section, this, those ribs are repeated each four, as you see, four meter, exactly the same distance and the plan floor to floor. And in, in the fifth point, the program, the, the space, arise in the interior of this square. The volume are located in this space in more arbitrary way. Okay. As you can see there, so this is geometry that is the main force to determine the space and the space is at the interior of this uh, square and I repeat the square on plan is the same square on section. More. I think the third one is a project whose shape has been determined by the force of arbitrary the chance. It's in Madrid and in the center of the city and in the um, courtyard, the bad courtyard of a um, 19th century old palace. You can see the palace on the right side there, up there. Um, the garden, the small garden of the bath courtyard of this old palace. We have to extend this old palace. First, the owner cut all the trees of this um, old um, garden. Um, it was in very poor uh, condition. And we thought that it was the occasion to make a link of relation between the arbitrary forces of nature on the um, left side 
No soy yo, ¿no? I'm sorry. I don't. And um, and the uh, regular um, uh, architecture of form of the old palace. We made many years ago, this is a project of uh, 15 years ago, we made a decision th of take the last tree that has been cut, and uh, we take it uh, all in pictures, obviously, and we make a geometric process of this um, old tree, you can see there, on the top left, and with this um, old tree, and a parametric process by the computer, we create an artificial forest that follow the parametric position of the old trees in the old garden, creating an arbitrary nature as con opposition or contradictory to the regular uh, Cartesian architectural building of the 19th century. At the interior of this artificial forest, we introduced the new box. And uh, so establishes in the building itself this relation between the artificial wall and the nat nat natural wall that are uh, our interest in this, in this particular project. Obviously, they are not column at the interior because it's the structure, again, that create the form at the form of the interior of this artificial forest. So it's allowed to locate offices on auditorium because there are not restriction, not functional restriction. It's 15 or 16 years old, the project, I think. The fourth one. The four one, no, sorry, the five, no? the five. The fifth um, is um, affected by one of the <coughs> oldest forces that determine the shape of the building program. The hospital are possibly the most forbidding architectural type. Is the reason, you know, is the functional complexity. It's so complicated a hospital that um, usually um, the experts say that there's no room for um, architectural um, interest, for it's not um, the typology to create shape or form or space. In this, I think this um, hospital we finished already in, in, in Madrid, not in Madrid, some distance from Madrid, this is in construction, um, give up the opportunity to demonstrate that this is not true. Usually the, the hospital uh, form proceed in this way. You can see there some example. There uh, is functionalism approach. We um, usually concentrate the program in block, trying to get close it as it, it depends on his proximity, surgeon close to uh, X-ray or laboratory, etc. And then filtration are the link between those blocks. This is a hospital. We made it a little bit different. And we began again <coughs> with a simple form, again the square. And we said, if the circulation is the masterpiece, is, the, is the, the, the key point of this functional program, we will use the circulation. We are going to concentrate the force of circulation on this program, put all together, 
and create like a two big highways, one public, one private. And those two strips that cut the um, a schematic ideal square in three um, wing on three part. So it creates two interior spaces that are with all the circulation of the hospital are there. Uh, no problem, not only the horizontal, to the vertical as well, uh, circulation is in this uh, space. This is one of those space, is the public one. All people are public, not professional, <coughs> um, circulate up and down and um, uh, vertical and horizontally in this, in this space. And this is the space for the professional. All the circulation of the hospital are there, so it's very easy to orientate. And um, it determines the form of this, of this, of this block, of this uh, apparently organic architecture that needs to be connected in this functionalist approach that uh, admits another different view, another different vision. What about rooms in the hospital? Just the same. You can see there on the left side the typical floor plan. Uh, in this approach, all the rooms are pulled together and then create a circulation between those rooms. It's uh, the corridor. Um, but in fact, it, it, it permits the approach, the typical approach of our office. We start again with the simple form. In a soft square, one of the, the <coughs> probably most ideal form, circle. If we put the, the room around the circle, we create an opportunity to improve one of the f those apparently important determination of the hospital, that is the vision in each plan. So you can see there that the uh, staff can control all the room from this point instead of the corridor. Because in this plan, the circulation is not uh, the, 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 the key point. Um, and obviously, again, the forces of program pressure the ideal form of the circle till obtain this avoid shape of um, the uh, room's plants. You can see the result. And we place, in a very simple way again, the spaces of the uh, function program of the hospital and the other part of the program, one on top of the other. This is the interior of this space that creating the circle permit to um, obtain those um, extra gifts that sometimes architecture provide of the give up the, of, um, of the professional. And this is one of the examples. With all the room around this internal space. See the model? And obviously, we keep the same process. When you have a process, you have to keep on this process till the end, not only from the ideal or intellectual support of the shape, either in construction of the, or, or the process of a construction, and obviously in all detail. The facade is the same, is the square and the circle. The square that determinate the, the um, functional part of the hospital and the circle that determinate the shape of the space of the room are who create this um, um, rhomboid form that shape the exterior facade of the, of the hospital. And demonstrate that the process is um, a question to keep um, um, firm a uh, consequence with the first of the initial decisions. This is for interior of the rooms. And finally, 
the last one, economy. Or, well, I don't know if it's the last one, sorry. It's the um, Telefonica headquarters in Madrid, Spain. Telefonica is the biggest Spanish company uh, and create a new headquarters, a campus in center of, uh, nine centers, sorry, um, in Madrid, but in the suburbs of Madrid, um, very close to one of the belt highways of the city. Um, I have another picture of the shot, but uh, the economy was so strong determination that we decided to accept economy as the main force that is going to um, determine, is going to um, create the shape, the form of the space of this building. The client decided that this, the square is, um, the square is a present um, <laughs> continuously in our, in our work. The square is the most corporate plan. So they demanded us to create, let me go there, you can see those three, 12 square as the most corporate plan with the central core of vertical circulation at the center of the plan and a square 50 by 50. So this is a strong um, limit for the uh, freedom of an architect. So we, we decided after some um, <coughs> different um, approach and scheme, this is the economy that is going to determine the shape of the building, the force of this project. What is the most economy um, act of an architect? Of what is the most economic or the first economic creation in architecture? A roof, a roof to create a shelter, the first the first um, act is to create a roof. First, a flat, obviously a flat um, bottom, a flat earth. But second, to have a roof over this, this space and create this, this, this shelter, very elemental shelter. So Telefonica is that. We accept economy as the force. What is the most economy? A roof. And we, what we create? a roof, and between the hair and the roof, all those building, all those corporati corporative square <coughs> demanded by the client, we will place it. Um, <coughs> what is the most simple way to create a spaces um, the, on transition between private and public? three, with only three elements, to create a square open, as you can see the four corner are three elements, those create a space, and a space in between interior is an exterior, is not public, is not private, with only three elements, only three building, buildings that create this space connecting the exterior wall with the interior wall of the campus. Some picture of that. Um, this is one of those space, one space of connection, a space of um, relation of the people who work there and the people who come to visit uh, Telefonica headquarters with a roof and three buildings. That's all. And to more private space and the interior of the campus, we need four. We need us in a square to create the limit because it's almost totally private. So there are four of those um, um, corner that create those four group of buildings that create the interior with the, the most elemental approach, the internal space of the campuses. <coughs> those buildings that are alive between the hearth and the ceiling, be between the uh, bottom and the top, are related, you see there, the roof is red and the bottom is black, are related with the roof, either with the bottom. Closing to the exterior or admitting people going underneath the building 
to the interior of the spaces. You can see one of the example of the building belong to the roof and people uh, walk through the space uh, below the building to access at the interior of the complex, like this. Or are building related with the with the with the earth, with the bottom, with the soil, and close the uh, relation of the internal spaces with the external spaces. And um, finally, uh, facade. How to keep that this um, concept um, along all the process of design, of creation, of form. What is the most elemental, elemental form? Um, just a flat um, shape, just a flat screen of glass. To protect of the sun, we use double screen. And we use double screen of glass. Uh, it depends on the orientation as, um, as, as, as usual. But it's apparently the main problem with economy. When you design it, with economy as main force is the um, uh, worry of the concern of the architect that to get a very bold form, a very um, banal form. And how to transform those banal form in a cheapest way, in the cheapest way. What is the most free energy in the world? The sun is free. How to create, how to transform this elemental facade with, um, with just sun, with no coast, using the sun, as in history and with the old time, with the example of the master of the past. In the column of Greece and Rome, we uh, return at the beginning of this page. They transform with just some strip the columns uh, with a um, lesson of architecture that with the less we can get the more and with no cause just the sun it transform the facade with no ornament just with that <coughs> along the day we recover this very old uh, lesson of the master and using the ribs that connect both both screen of glass in Telefonica building, uh, we create this opportunity of, of, of the, to, of the opportunity at the sun to project sh shade over the screen at the interior and along the day transform the uh, appearance of the uh, elevation and the whole complex is affected by this surprisingly um, chain and vibration with sun, with the Spanish sun can see there. Um, and in two minutes to finish because it's included a topography. Topography in this building in <coughs> an old project um, started by my father in it's a building with more than 35 or 40 years. But it's a good example of how topography could determine the shape of the building. Um, it's um, in a, mm, a small mm, uh, cliff in, in, in sorry cliff in, in Madrid in the central avenue of Madrid, and you can see that there is the slope, this small slope. Uh, usually, when a building is in a slope, and the forces of topography determine the shape of the building in two ways, or adapted to this line of topography, and are building that belong to the natural wall with form uh, like curves or adapted, uh, very integrate, integrated in the, sh in the slope, or in just the opposite, um, confront a contrast of buildings that are brutally uh, like a, a flat roof on the uh, previous example, um, uh, situated um, over the the, the slope. Here in this building, we use. Uh, let me see what is this. 
we use the the two the two the two uh, approach of the um, that um, permit the topography forces in the uh, determination of form. You can see there the lines that follow the um, curves, the lines of the topography, and in front a platform a podium is a, a just a um, flat plan that um, uh, intersect. I could see the section. Um, the slope, and in top, the small tower. There, the tower, again the square, this um, typical um, corporative plan where the core is extracted from the, the wall of the geometry to uh, in direction of the slope to connect this core with the topography of the slope with the lines and create an um, um, interesting plan with the core external of the um, uh, space, the square, this again, an, an elemental form, freedom of uh, connection, column, uh, and services. You can see there the building is suspended from the, the core, there are no columns because all the uh, structure is working on, on, on traction, not compression. And there, th you can see the line of the, the slope and this elemental flat plan in form. The elevation follows exactly the same process of uh, affected by uh, topography, creating this building, you can see there, there very easily, the slope, the plan, and the tower flying over this uh, two elemental topography action. And that's all. I, I hope the, the, um, it could uh, interest you in the different process and in our office um, work with uh, different forces and in project. And thank you very much again for the invitation. Thank you very much for your attention and your presence uh, here. Thank you. Bye. I'm not uh, going to uh, giving very uh, uh, com much comments on, on his works, but I want to uh, instead ask a question because I translate the book uh, Spain Builds, and the book deals with the uh, modern heritage of Spanish architecture, starting with the uh, crash down of our Franco uh, policy and the government governance. So I think uh, uh, maybe your also uh, your father is uh, one of the most important architects for the first generation of uh, Spanish modernist. So how they look at the the heritage of modernism, and also uh, how do you, uh, how are you influenced by him, and also that generation, and how do you look at their their works in your mind? That's uh, my question. I want to pose to you. Thank you. Well, I, I think um, I mentioned in the speech that the the most important, perhaps of this generation that Carlos um, mentioned as well after the Spanish Civil War is the generation that bring um, the modernism to Spain. But thanks to a new sort, a new kind of a school of architecture, a school of architecture, technical school. And my father and the friend, because those time was very few architects, and all of them was our friends. So, that um, the most important is this social aspect, and they insist um, many, many times that is this social and technical relation that allow them to improve the condition of life in Spain. So it's not a question of both art school um, wasting time is the ideal child 
is the neo baroque or the new or the new uh, neoclassic um, if a kind of architect formed to develop a new kind of architecture focused to improve the social condition of a country in a um, very poor situation of after a terrible war. So I think this is the, the most important, and by sure, the aspect that most, or they feel, I, I, I said they because uh, I'm sure they, I'm speaking in the name of all of them, this generation, more, more proud about their role as architect in Spain. How it influenced us. I, I, I think I, I, I um, just make it so statement in, in the speech. Um, by this technical formation that uh, prepared us to respond to the demand of a society. The society changed. Its society is different, and the time is different, but the architect has to be prepared to um, respond to those necessities. I would, I would like to add that uh, this generation, uh, the Rafael father's, uh, uh, um, Rafael's father generation, it was really like a miracle, you know, because, uh, you know, mm. Spain had been uh, absolutely close to the new tendencies uh, all over the world, you know. There was very, very few information about uh, modern architecture in Spain. And this generation was educated in the social housing uh, projects, you know. It is something what they did were a very, very humble housing, you know, very, very humble yeah. housing for very, very poor people. So, and from this starting point, they could build, uh, you, I, I think, one of, of, the, of the best uh, 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 versions of a modern movement in, in, in Europe in the 1950s and the 1960s, you know. Uh, so, let me ask uh, Rafael, uh, you know. Because I think you have created, uh, you know, you have your own way, uh, absolutely very different to the one of your father. The conditions of the country are very different. Uh, you have an excellent architecture, but your start, the starting point is different. And, and I think you, you have your own way different to that of your father. Is it like this? Thank you. I, I think so, or, 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 or I hope so, but um, <coughs> let me repeat the statement. It's not a Spanish architecture, that is style or um, conditions, but it's a way to make architecture that I think is Spanish. I, I can't recognize this when I watch my work or the work of my generation. Uh, obviously is different because I selected those uh, forces and others selected others interest forces, other world and each one has their own process their own method to develop that not very different but the point in common is that all the time we are <coughs> moving from the intellectual idea to the shape, at the same time, we are moving at the same time in parallel from the idea to the construction. On plans, um, a, a wall is a line, but a line in the real wall is a in the real wall is, a, is, a, is, is like this, the thickness. So it's chain. In many occasions, we see a project that is really attractive <coughs> in in plants, in drawings, and when we uh, watch it on reality, is really poor, and sometimes it's the opposite. But uh, I think this this education of the architect, the Spanish architect, but personally my <coughs> education to think how to construct, how is the structure, how it's how are we going to put all together, is um, a method, and all the Spanish architecture probably is not. Um, extravagant with no example um, uh, like a, a spectacular but is is this in the train of this origin of tradition of social architecture and techniques to help the country
Well, uh, I, I totally agree with Rafael that he's saying that uh, there's a, not a, either a Spanish architecture or Chinese architecture uh, today in, in style, but there is something that rooted in the, in the social and cultural condition now here. So we, we can see that even uh, uh, foreign architects, when he come to China to do some projects, there are some impact on uh, uh, his works from the local uh, techniques and climates and or maybe uh, the the people who built it so there uh, for the from the whole process of uh, uh, spatial production there's a uh, uh, something uh, we feel is is chinese but not in a in a in a style so i totally agree with uh, with him also in china today there is also a very strong uh, uh, I think a trend for the architects to rethink really about for during the past uh, 10 years we have been building a lot of housing but it's not a uh, housing for the for the poor people for the real social uh, in a bad condition people so uh, now we're thinking about building the social the something could be termed as a social housing and we believe that our great architect always like a, Le Corbusier in the history and many good contemporary architects are dealing with that social housing because it's not only a creation form but also it's a, a creation form related with the social issues and social conditions in, in the society. That is very Im important for a great architect, I think. It, so that is something I, I, I can see from contemporary uh, China, uh, Spanish uh, architect, uh, architects' works as well. So that's why my feeling about the contemporary situation. And also, we have s the similar approaches that are developed uh, in, in China. These recent two or three years, there's a lot of uh, discussion and debate about uh, how the good architects should deal with the social issues rather than just create uh, you know, expensive, l delicate houses for the, for the most rich people. That's, uh, I think, a similar approach as we can find in Spain. Yeah. That's good. I, I mentioned the speech with this uh, scheme of um, the, same, the same wall, and the stream in this Spain and China, in these two extreme we have been countries, both isolated for, for a long period of time, isolated of the world, China and Spain. This generation we are talking about, and my father's generation, they never work, they never work it abroad. They all work is in Spain. They never went out. And the same, the same way, no uh, foreigner architects working on Spain in those times. There are no relations, there are not um, connection. But now it's different. Um, there, um, I'm working abroad. There are many architects from around the world working in Spain. If we are able to improve each other, sharing this different education for a best architecture in different countries, in, in, in China or in Spain, mm -hmm. for example, because following with this sample, I think it's the tax of this generation, completely different, completely different, because there are no reference how to act. Can a Spanish architect work out of Spain and with no control, with no um, involvement in the construction process? It's completed a part of our tradition. I think it's your tradition as well. Um, how to get the best of the example and other uh, education of the other school of architecture in the world to improve China, I think is the, um, the tax of this generation are exactly the same in Spain, in different social, different social condition, but I think is the, what is the uh, accent and profile of, of this um, generation. I don't know what to think about. Uh, I think uh, Professor Lee have made a, a very good uh, definition of uh, what's happening now. Uh, there's not uh, national architecture, but, uh, but local conditions, uh, social, economic, uh, cultural conditions that affect uh, uh, the architecture. And so uh, I would like to make a question to, to Rafael now. Because in Spain and in Europe, we are living now a, a very, very serious uh, uh, economic crisis. Uh, the biggest our generation has uh, ever lived. We, 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 are, we are not sure about uh, 
uh, what's uh, going to be our future and our conditions, social and economic conditions in the future. So my question for Rafael is, uh, uh, how do you think that this crisis is going to affect uh, the Spanish architecture? Uh, can we have a look of, uh, if, you know, uh, about a change in, I don't know if in programs, if in quality, if in a kind of buildings, if in shapes. Uh, can you imagine something about the future of Spanish architecture after the crisis? Well, I think we have to um, come back or um, move our vision again to this example of social approach of the architect. Um, a space, form, shape is really attractive. We, all of us, know what it doesn't mean, but it's not the most relevant for social um, uh, for, for societies in, in some way. So um, Spain have a good architect because all the building has to be designed by law by an architect and this includes all the residential but now we have um, moved from, from the top social houses quality to a very, very poor. I mean, uh, in, in average. Obviously, they are very good example and, and very poor no? but in those times. No? But I think the architect has to come back to this, to this aspect to, to help the society. I insist in the good school, in not, not as just one example. One of the things my, my father was most, most proud of himself was the plan for um, a small um, schools uh, in Andalusia, in the south of Spain. It's a plan to develop hundreds, thousands of small schools in all, in, in most of the uh, small uh, village, etc. It repeat one model. It's apparently is not very attractive for a young architect. I designed one very simple school, and that's all. But they say no, that's all not. I repeat this small house in more than 10,000 schools in Andalusia. Most of the children that uh, learn how to read and speak and write uh, in Andalusia now um, made that in one of my school. And he said it's the, probably the most important thing I do in architecture. This is so different approach. This is so different. I think not socially because socially the conditions are really different but we have to, in Spain to move our uh, look at, of interest, our um, uh, field of interest to those especially. And in China, I think it's very similar. No? I think this, when the country is in this incredible, huge construction process, uh, there is very difficult to avoid mistake, especially in big construction and social. But, um, perhaps the opportunity to work, to, to work together with those um, in those aspects. Mm -hmm. no? Maybe we give some uh, chances for the audience. If you have any questions, you can ask. 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 Because they have to record everything. So it's better to ask. Uh, uh, firstly, I, I want to thank uh, Professor Rafael for the excellent uh, uh, speech. And uh, your work is very inspiring. Uh, uh, however, my, my question is more related to the how you work. I mean, uh, judging from the the way you, uh, you sp mean the way you present your, explain your project, it seems that uh, you uh, find your, you can find an uh, idea, a concept very easily and uh, develop it step by step. Uh, but however, uh, when I uh, do my, do a design, uh, I, I'm always confused uh, with uh, 
dozens of ideas and uh, I need to compare all of them to find the, the best one and uh, then develop it. Uh, I mean, do you have a similar confusion or you or you can you 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 design in a very easy and uh, relaxed way. <laughs> Thank you. Very good question. <laughs> um, I um, I have two sons. Um, um, one of them is um, Madrid School of Architecture, and at home, he made this kind of question. Say, um, Father, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. In fact, when you design, your process is arbitrary. It's not true what you try to um, convince us at the school. Or when they say you, means all architects. No? All architects try to present um, their work as an evident result of a process. This is the process. I have a process. I'm starting simple um, idea, simple form, and um, thanks to my personal process, I finish in this excellent masterpiece. I say, it's true or not? Because my son said, I suspect that this is not true. I suspect that there are many arbitrary decisions along the process. And those arbitrary decisions are permitted to the old architect. No one is going to complain, say, oh, this is arbitrary. But at the school, all the time, the teacher and say, what is the reason? Why you did that? What is this for what, for what, and for what? what, what what's happened? What at the school we have to be <coughs> all the time saying, why? I do this because I feel like this. No? Okay, this is the question all around the world in all, all the school of architecture in the world. I said, how percentage of freedom of personal arbitrary decision may I take in a project? This is a very difficult question, believe me, very difficult. It exists. It's not true that everything is a process. Even this approach to say, okay, it's not my personal approach. It's not my... my um, uh, mood is a process, is function, is the program that provides the form. It's not me, it's the program. Oh, now what said is not me, it's the computer. I introduce all the item and the form is like that. It's not true. It's obviously that it's a part of arbitrary in the process, but not at the beginning. At the school it's impossible to start in this point because if not you create no sense form. You have to keep passing and follow your teacher, developing a very strict process. This is a profession that you will start to create something at the 40 years old. So well, uh, th this is the, the, the beginning. So be passing, follow the instruction. <laughs> um, probably in the future I will assist on a speech and you will explain how arbitrary is your work, but not now. <laughs> Okay, uh, maybe uh, Nia, sure, please. Uh, thank you, Professor Rafael. Can I uh, have get more details? Uh, <laughs> because uh, you know, some architects they they uh, they present I mean those uh, rough models. I mean they they ally the models in in a line and uh, put them uh, on the first page of their their their, their book and uh, saying uh, this I mean it shows uh, the, the their their struggle uh, to some extent uh, and do you I mean in the in the first step do you I mean focus just focus on one concept or you also struggled between different concepts and uh, and uh, di dis uh, try to discover their potentials and before you follow one. I, I think maybe you, uh, you can come to after the presentation and then maybe you give the chance for another student to present another question. Okay.
等一下结束了以后来跟大家讨论一下这个问题。现在还有再再有问一个问题，好不好？还有谁问想问一个问题？没有问题啊。OK， maybe maybe I will say something to wrap up. Then we can. OK. Okay. Thanks. I think to everybody. Now this uh, this is a wonderful morning, although it's raining very heavily. But we feel the the spirit of architecture and also architecture creation here. So I'm very happy to uh, host uh, this uh, conference. And also uh, before we end, I want to say uh, something about the the school and our collaboration. Uh, you know that uh, we have been from the school of architecture. We have been collaborating with uh, many uh, different architecture schools in Spain. You probably know that uh, Spain is one of the most uh, uh, important country today, contributing a lot to contemporary worldwide uh, architectural culture. And so I also, uh, I love personally the Spanish culture a lot, so I've been working with uh, Spanish friends on this. And recently the university uh, is going to set up a program called Sino Spanish Campus, and I'm responsible and going to be the uh, academic director of uh, it's initiated by Tongji University and UPM and UPC, uh, one in Madrid and one in Barcelona. But fortunately, we also have other partners. We have UEM, we have uh, Seville. I definitely want will want be bring to bring those uh, uh, partners into the program, and not for architecture, but for also other disciplines like uh, civil engineering. So that's uh, one of the missions that we're looking at, and. Uh, it's also a good chance to look at the, uh, to communicate more with uh, Spanish colleagues, our Spanish colleagues and partner universities uh, in, in the future. So let's uh, take this chance uh, to applaud, to thank uh, those two professors again uh, at the end, and thanks to them. And we hope that uh, they can come to us more often and give us uh, more uh, uh, thoughts and teach experience about their practice and also teaching. Thank you very much. You want to say something? Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Alice.